Welcome Wrench Army members! Today is super exciting because we are going to be assembling the last component to our Franken lightning detector. After all, we need a place to house like all of the electronics, some cool mad scientist switches that we have, and our mad scientist bubbler, which is secretly our fog juice reservoir for our mini fog machine that we made out of a vape pen. Uh, so I already see David Beck, of course, is number one uh, with an offering of chicken, uh, Frau Bluehurst horse, and Frankenstein's castle. And he's asking, got power? Yes, today we actually had no power issues. Yesterday, it just gremlinized, or I guess it was Monday, gremlinized everything, starting with my LED strip which I put away there uh, it pretty much cooked it right before the stream so when the power came back the LED strip resumed doing what it was doing so I assumed all was good but no it fried the uh, power adapter to it which died just today I was like using it more and more and it was dying and dying and then now it's it's done it's buried uh, but luckily when I examined the LED strip I plugged it in and ran a program about half of the remaining LEDs were shut shot but then you can see a certain portion where it was functioning properly so I just kind of like cut out the bad stuff and I kept the good because there was a little bit of LED LED work that we still had to do and that is for our bubbler and where is his bottom half right here right in front of me so we have his bottom half that we aged together. We did this giant burn mark using coffee grounds. And if you look inside, there's a ring of LEDs. So what I basically did was run to the LED strip, completely undo it, and grabbed its tail end, which has connectors, uh, and then unraveled from there because I know that those LEDs are good. And I made a ring of LEDs in here, which are gonna come out this side right here. So here we have our power ground and signal that's gonna feed this ring and we can make some cool color combinations and stuff with it. And then you'll see like a ground, an extra ground and power because what I want to do is supply another power source to the tail end of the LED strip and of course we have ours from the head end uh, so that way we're pretty much sure not to get any voltage drop. Uh, we don't have a huge long strip uh, we're powering about a hundred and nine LEDs excluding these so that's not huge but you have to think about the run of the wire so if you were only powering three LEDs but you separated each one by a meter then yeah it's best to power them for uh, from both ends so it's really the length of the power wire that you have to be worried about so I think you know it's, it's all snug in there and nice and hiding and I went ahead and tacked some glue over here so we don't have any pooling or anything like that so this will come out the bottom of our bubbler tube. So all in all, I think this is gonna look pretty amazing. So one of the things I went ahead and did was come up with, you know, our control box. So, you know, just got a head start. You know, it looks like this. Uh, at a former stream, I asked you guys, do you want it to look like the typical Frankenstein metal conduit box, you know, with the circuit breakers, and it can all be like uh, rusting out and corroding, maybe with some green slime, or do you want something more steampunk baroque, like uh, dark wood, maybe some gold accents, and you guys kind of went for the, uh, you know, the, the nice baroque style look. So we got a fancy young Frankenstein here, you know. So I think we'll be able to tackle all the very cool classic monster movie, mad scientist, and steampunk looks between the faux cathedral window that has young Frankenstein's castle and this control panel. So I think we're gonna like touch bases on all of it. So I don't know, I think this stain turned out pretty well. And uh, Dave Beck is saying nice looking wood, what kind is it? So let's check out the construction. This is actually one quarter inch plywood. And so this is birch. So it's got that nice uh, birch veneer on this side. And of course on the other side is just the ugly side, you know, that you typically don't stain. And you'll see how I put it together. Typical pocket holes. This is a one by two common board here. So the frame is made by one by twos and the face is quarter inch because for the most part, we're going to be putting in switches. They're pretty lightweight. We don't need like a heavy duty, uh, you know, wood that we then have to drill into and do more work. But you will notice that I did put a one by six here uh, that I screwed in as a support. And the reason for that 
is once we flip this over, I need a place to anchor this thing. It's not super heavy, but one quarter inch plywood, I'm thinking I'll probably get a little bit of flex, maybe. Uh, so I figured if I have like a strong backing board here, I can really screw this in or bolt it in uh, where I know that that beam is. So this will be nicely, you know, right here. Uh, then I thought, well, you know how a lot of steampunk broke things have brass that has gold, but it also has different stains of wood. So one of the things I did was cut these little strips out uh, to make a frame. And the original idea, original uh, idea was to stain it a lighter color. But then I was like, you know, we're really missing that gold brass look. So instead I had already cut them out. I'm like, there's gotta be a way to paint this in a way that looks like aged brass. And I think that's what we're gonna tackle today. And I have luckily some leftover rivets or thumbtacks over here from our floating corner shelves that we also did in a steampunk style. And that corrosion was more the classic stainless steel where it's very brown, it's very red oxide looking. This is gonna look a little bit different. And so we got a really great effect by taking the heads off of the thumbtacks and then polishing them down or sanding them down to rough them up. And they look like just kind of aged rivets going across. So I think that'll look really good. But before we get started, it's decision making time. Oh, and there is one more thing. I'm testing this out on you guys. I decided after one of the streams where I was trying to manage the window and I just couldn't keep anything in, in view for you guys. Sometimes I have to work with something really close by, which just kind of like all the cameras miss. So I added a third camera angle. So it's a little awkward for this one, but you know, we're testing, we're testing. And so yeah, now you guys are over here. And the objective for this is sometimes when I'm working with really large, awkward or weird pieces, plus some of you guys always ask about the shop, you only see the one view, either this back wall here with all the tools or the one directly like, you know, behind this way, uh, which is a, like a pallet wood wallpaper. A lot of people think it's all tiled, but no, it's like a pallet wood uh, wallpaper. So that's the only two walls you've ever seen. And so that's kind of like the whole rest of the shop. It's huge, isn't it? Yeah, not, not at all. So uh, we built this three cabinet storage unit. The corner floating shelves are in the corner over there. You can just barely see them with a couple baskets. And then connected to that is an entire other very tall unit for uh, brooms, you know, and things like that. So it's like a big wraparound unit, 18 inches in depth. I had a really hard time finding either wall cabinets or a system that can hold as much stuff because like a lot of you guys, I share this shop with my personal life, you know? So although I have like this 20 by 10 space, I really only work out of a 10 by 10. Uh, so hence why the car projects are, are a bit tough, you know, in, in a 10 by 10 space, unless it's like a mini Cooper. Maybe we could do a mini Cooper or a go-kart. Uh, but anyways, this, you know, Every, every stream will be different. You know, I'll put the camera where I can think I'm going to need you guys to see. Uh, so Frozen Mustache is saying, nice angle. All right, so he's liking the angle. You can see like all my stuff. Uh, maybe I'll face it the other way where you see my Three Stooges uh, collectibles. I have signs and things like that. I, lo I love Three Stooges. So I have some cool vintage stuff there. But there also is the side of the wall where I wanna hang this lightning thing once we're done. So like I said, it's decision time and I'm gonna flip you guys over here and move this to a place where where you can see placement that's the big decision I wanted to keep this box somewhat manageable in size because the window is really your main act like when you go to a concert that Frankenstein lightning detector window you know giant thing is the main act it's the thing that's supposed to really grab your attention and so i didn't want to create like a competition this is like the opening act to the main act no main act likes another really good opening act that's competition with it so i wanted to keep this you know rather simple so all the attention goes on the window but also in a style that matches and enhances the window so for our opening act right here i went ahead like i said and stained it this is a jacko bean stain and what i like about it is that it's dark rich but it's not so dark that it obliterates all that fine grain work. A lot of times when you go really, really dark, you lose uh, a lot of the detail. And like I was saying, this is quarter inch birch uh, with a veneer finish. 
and then same thing here this is all quarter inch that i created and it wraps around so i thought this what might be cool to paint as metal straps you know and we'll start with bronze and then we'll use gold to kind of start making it look aged and then we'll add our rivets but the biggest thing we need to figure out and I I basically stripped this down we have a tube that goes inside that bubbles we also have that copper pipe that wraps around but just for placement and to get everything uh, set I just you know ripped everything off the last thing I want to do is to keep uh, putting on and taking this portion here off especially since we have the delicate LEDs and this one's gonna be easy I'm just gonna put some velcro down here and uh, likewise on the butt area of our um, bubbler tube that way I can pop this on and off anytime I feel like I need to fix something or something's gone wrong uh, so and we have plenty of room here to be able to fit our hose so we have like this little spigot that we're going there this connector that I'm going to drill and put on the bottom and all this is going to come out and connect to our faux cathedral window and rather than have like loose wires I mean that looks kind of not super steampunk or mad scientisty I did find this lying around and I thought mm, this uh, conduit covering or cable wire organizer I thought this is pretty cool because it's got like that nice uh, ribbed texture that we can age and make it look really cool it's got the opening in the back and so I thought this would be pretty cool to have come out of here like this and it's gonna hide all these wires and we can either glue it or, or something you know on here and paint it up all all nice and this will connect to the window supplying all these wires or you know, I'm thinking of also getting a skinnier one of this because this is kind of overkill for the size of wires that we have coming out. So I wanted to get a thinner diameter ribbed one and then use this one as the main power supply. So a lot of times you see the control boxes with this giant cool cord going to, you know, whatever it's powering. So I think I'm going to save this for that and then get a slightly smaller diameter one for the bottom. But that's one of the decisions. So, you know, how we're going to, to do this. I really like this uh, conduit thing. I think it, it'll paint up really, really nice. So, the most important now, before I start cutting this up, is where do we want to place this? At first, I was thinking, okay, it should go in the middle like this and kind of high up because this has to be mounted higher than our window because it's going to gravity feed from the bottom to our mini fog machine. So I'm going to put this as high as I can in the middle like that. And then we only have two switches. We have the main on off switch because it can handle 12 volts DC. Now this is an AC switch, but as I was reading the spec sheet uh, and this one's courtesy of, uh, of Dave here, isn't that awesome guys? And so I was reading that it can do 12 volts DC up to 30 amps. So that's pretty much more than what we're going to need. I'm either going to use 9 or 12 volts, probably 12 to power everything because the lights need 5, the Arduino needs 5, the lightning detector needs 3.3, the all the various pumps that we're using. And then I thought about using um, buck converters to convert down you know for so we don't fry anything you know so it'll go from 12 to 5 for the lights from 12 to 3.3 .3 for the lightning detector you know so I got a whole bunch of buck converters that I'll connect up but we can uh, do something like this and because this is rated up to 6 volts this is going to shut on and off our fog machine uh, our mini fog machine only because if I have problems with the coil or if I just am not watching it I got to step out and do a phone call I might just want to temporarily shut it off because that's probably going to be the most temperamental part of the entire window and so maybe I can have one on one side and one on the other and I might just move myself to be able to do this because that looks kind of you know funky it was looking like they were not you know centered or square or anything like that so that's that option uh, or they can be down here now one of the things is that it doesn't leave as much room for additional gauges additional monitors because remember we are missing that uh, copper spiral so the whole thing is actually more like this fat and so we have very little room here to be able to mount anything so alternatively I was thinking of doing this move it closer to the window because this will be mounted on the window will be over here 
So this is close to the window. This bottom will gravity feed into our thing and put these two guys over here. And then I'm just gonna move myself one more time. And whoop, there we go, now you guys can see. So these guys will be here. Maybe we can do like a nice little, little placard for them that I pre, you know, I was kind of like messing around and we can paint it, you know, like a, a gold, a brass, or even a black with gold accents. So something like this. And then look at all this room we have to put little gauges. And so I was even thinking of doing one of those old instrument type monitors with the curved, you know, they look like the old tube TVs, but smaller. Uh, and then hide an LCD screen behind it. Not my lame little one like I bought. Let me see if it's still back here. Yeah, so I had gotten this lame little one and this was gonna be our original pocket lightning detector. So yeah, the window is a little bit bigger than this. So I thought, well, now we have a bunch of room to be able to add stuff in the future. So I'm kind of leaning towards this layout, but you guys decide which layout you want and I'm gonna start to paint our metal strips right here. So either bubbler to the side and this type of arrangement here or bubbler to the center and then I guess we can put the switches on either side. Um, again, I think this will probably work out best for future, you know, future building on and I'm gonna remove this thing here and uh, get it out the way. And so Dave is already chiming in that he likes option two best. Yes, I'm kind of agreeing with that because we're gonna have some nice things here. I also wanted to put some indicator lights like a, that it's on, you know, like a green LED that they have uh, for boats. Uh, but painted just right, they also look very mad scientist. So I'm gonna order a couple of those. I also would like some space or some kind of gauge to eventually indicate how far away is this lightning from one to 40 kilometers. Right now, our window tells us, is there lightning? Is it a disturber? Is there just noise? Uh, or is there no lightning at all? It's a beautiful day or a rainy day, but with no lightning and we have a lighting scheme for that. But if it is lightning, we know it's lightning, but we just don't know how far it is. And the program is able to tell us that. So we need a way to like spit that out <laughs> to the board somehow. And so maybe it can be two uh, LCD screens. One is gonna have temperature, pressure. Uh, so that's, you know, another decision time. Start making a list of what kind of things you want this weather center to detect and we can tie in different lighting schemes to them, LCD screens, that kind of thing. But anyways, this leaves a lot of room. So it looks like a bubbler to the side. Everyone is saying like bubbler to the side. So all right, bubbler to the side, enough chat. Let's get going now that we have our, uh, our decision here. And one of the things I'm gonna have to do, and I think I'm gonna do this first before I paint this and then butcher it, is I'm going to have to decide, you know, the hole. See, I cut a little window and we'll put these two together and it'll act as if it's like a big metal plate, you know? Um, I didn't get a chance to run to the store because my original intention was to just go get a metal plate and use a grinder or cut it up or a cut off wheel, but I had already cut these strips and I kind of had these left over. So I'm like, eh, might as well, you know, we're already gonna be painting metal effects. What's one more little, uh, you know, little thing. So this mounts on the surface just like that. And we're gonna tie our fog juice uh, power to this. And this is gonna be on the outside. So we're gonna have some wires that we're going to then be part of that main power conduit that comes out and into the uh, um, window. <laughs> so the only electronics that's gonna be in the window is our mini fog machine. Uh, so everything else I'm gonna move into this box and this box has a lot more space underneath to be able to house things, see? Unlike the window, once the backing board is on, we have about an inch, whereas here we have about two-ish, you know, inches, one, one and a half inches. So I bought another half inch, which is more than enough. The one inch was already fine. So this is just more than enough. So no problem there. The reason I have this little cutout right here, this window, is that the other switch, uh-oh, here it is, this other switch, if you look at it, it mounts with a hole. Just, I believe this is a quarter inch and I'm gonna bring you guys in closer, right there. So all we're gonna do is drill a hole for this quarter inch, uh, you know, uh, uh, switch, 
switch mount uh, right here. Uh, and then this part is all in the back. So rather than having to drill like a square shaped hole, you know, through all this type of thing, through this and through the entire thing and then trying to pop it out, I figured, heck, we'll just go like this. And then all I have to do is drill a half inch hole through one layer instead of two layers. And I thought about double layer because it makes it pop out just a little bit than our strip. So this is a one quarter inch. This is two quarter inches uh, together. So that's a half inch right here. It pops out of the panel just a little bit to give it interest or else everything starts to look like it's the same level. So I'm going to back you guys out. Oop there yeah it starts to give everything dimension so that was my idea for that and having to drill through two solid ones i thought eh. and eventually let me put all this back because i'm gonna lose the pieces i know how i am they're gonna end up in a part of the table and then i'm gonna be like guys where is it where is it help me look for it so now that this guy's here it's gonna be about here this guy will be mounted uh, on top this guy will be about here uh, he's upside down for now uh, but that also leaves us room to perhaps mount another switch here and another switch here the smaller toggle ones so that's why I ended up cutting out a hole because it just gives me more options later on so let's try and get this thing all positioned up so I'm gonna you know, let me move this guy here so you guys can kind of see what's going on and this is the toughest part he's like always navigating this stuff so this guy will be about here and I'm gonna take a pencil and draw and yep we're gonna cut a hole in this sucker yeah we are this will be about here with our metal windings and let's see how that looks maybe we can move it down a little bit to give us more room and have kind of an even you know situation right here and I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna remove this and let's draw our square to get this hole cut out. Now, of course I could cut just a little hole for our switch, but something tells me I'm gonna be adding more switches. So I might as well just butcher this the once and uh, get it done. And I'm actually gonna use a Sharpie. <laughs> And one more look. Yep, that looks pretty even. The pencil is just not showing up. All right, so there's our square and I'm going to uh, grab the uh, jigsaw and let's just do that first. So that way I don't, you know, accidentally mar our paint work here. And let me jerry rig together uh, my stand. This is the part where we did this with our foot switch. And yeah, we had a couple moments there, but it all worked out. So I'm just uh, leaving you guys for two seconds here and coming back. I'm gonna make this little stand. And what's gonna be the best way for me to do this? Let me see. Oh, and I even have this metal here too. So I thought that we can maybe cut out little name plates. Now I don't have really any way of engraving letters on it, uh, but I can certainly paint on with a stencil, like power, fog, you know, all the different like little switches that we're gonna have. Or we can make bezels out of this for future gauges. So this is kind of like neat. It's a bit thin though. I think I maybe want something a little thicker. What did I drop? Oh, our future paint. All right, we're gonna need that. We're gonna need that to paint. So let me drill a hole here. To get us started. And let's see here. Like who am I looking at? Who am I looking at? <laughs> I'm gonna take me take me a little while to get used to it. Thing drilled up and this is a uh, this is quite sturdy I promise <laughs> So we got two holes 
And now, put that there because I might need it later. And I always put this bit back because if I don't, it ends up on the table, then it ends up on the floor. I'm bound to lose it, right? So it's like immediately put it back. I don't know about you guys, but the bit that comes with the drill is the, always the one that I lose first. So let me grab the, the jigsaw. It's down here. Now you guys get to see where I disappear off to every time I need to grab tools. <laughs> I leave them basically all here, which is my main exit. You know, so if there's a fire or any emergency, I will probably shock myself, cut myself, sand myself, solder myself, all on the way out <laughs> as I step all over everything. But it's, it's what works best right now. And then I have a bunch of goodies underneath the, uh, the table here. But I grab everything that I think I'm going to need off those shelves over there, off, you know, underneath here, and I pile everything that I could potentially need. But sometimes I do forget things, and then I end up putting you guys on, on uh, intermission. So here we go. This is where it went awry uh, during our foot switch maker for our butt kicking machine. But we got a bigger piece, so I think we're good. We got a little breakage there, but that's why, that's what the bezel is for. <laughs> I make it extra fat uh, to be able to cover things like that. So back to this side here. Make sure I don't like run into, I'm definitely gonna run into this log here or this four by four log. <laughs> there we go. what happens when you try and make a curve way too tight come on I was like I can do it I can do it no 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 you can't shallow curve So I can continue and get that side there. And then I pre-drilled this hole here. So we're ready to go. Oh, there I go again, trying to make that turn. turns but I'm I'm pushing its limits I'm pushing its limits yes tape the age edges David Beck is like right on it that's a good idea I am too far gone yeah David Beck has a good idea tape the edges you have some blue tape I do we are actually going to be busting it out uh, shortly here but 
I'm going to, since we're almost done, and we really only had butchery on here, which is going to be covered up. And are we clear down here? Yep, we are, as I touch the blade. And I'm just going to clean up this little edge here. Just, whoop, this is clearly not what happened to my wood. There we go. We got our our square. It's pretty enough. It's enough. Good enough for what we got going on. Because no one will see it. Let me hide my uh, my blocks here. So this is what we we ended up with. Let me just right there. And I'm gonna flip it and use a little bit of sandpaper on it. Kind of glad we did that first rather than start our paint job. That all nice, just to kind of remove the uh, splinters. Pretty good right there and you know it doesn't have to be perfect this pretty much will cover up any issues that we're gonna have and that's what one of the reasons I cut a fatter border just to be sure and here's our birch side and our not so pretty birch <laughs> side so we're gonna use the nice side and tape these two together so or tape them together glue them together so let me do that and also get rid of this thing Ugh. there we go Put this away. I'm sure I can unplug it. All right, and I'm going to get these two glued up so we can move on to the painting and then they'll be glued and ready for their own paint. Let me just cut off the glue crud. Some little glue crusties. And as typical Rachel fashion, I will not be gluing this on top of the actual piece like I normally do. I paint on top of everything and then wonder why, you know, it's a mess. So I'm just gonna put this over here and put together. Splinter, 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 splinter. All right, no splinters. All right, which side is prettier? I guess it doesn't matter. No one will see it. Okay, it's a lot of glue. Don't really need that much. Just making sure all the sides are as flush as we can get them. And then after the glue sets, we can just give it like a quick sanding on on all the sides because it doesn't look like I have any overlaps which is great you know I spent some time cutting this unlike I spent the time cutting this right there when it's going to be seen then then it matters you know gotta gotta do a good job glue is cheap uh-huh heck yeah and when we paint this up it's going to look like a real metal panel I think all right let me just uh, get my paper towel wipe the excess glue and then I'm just gonna put this to the side while it does its thing and we're gonna move on to attempting to paint some straps and this is where the painters tape comes in which I should have busted out earlier 
and I wouldn't I probably wouldn't have had any of those shards the other thing that I've seen woodworkers do is use an exacto knife or a blade and score along the pretty edge score along it so that way when the uh, the blade cuts through it's already been scored and this pretty uh, surface the pretty veneer is already cut so you don't have this nastiness so I was actually going to try that and I forgot and <laughs> I didn't. I got all excited to, to cutting it out and no. So let's see, where can I put this where I'll, I'll find it later. I'm putting it here so so you guys see. I'm, I'm putting it right here if I ask. Be like, it's, it's on your left. So let's see what we got going on here. Let me clean off any dust that might be lying around, dustifying itself, and I'm just gonna shove it in the hole, right there. Like a waiter, you know, he's got that little thing that he grabs all of the little food morsels, and he's like grabbing it, but like most of it's like falling on the floor. Like, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm, I'm not even gonna like make like I'm trying to grab it. It's falling on the floor, like right in the hole. <laughs> the table should have a hole where you can just shove all that stuff. There. So now painting. Let's see what we got going on. I got my dollar store uh, thing and uh, one of you, I think it was David that posted uh, Bob Ross and he's got this giant palette, you know, I'm, I'm a miniature, miniature working up to, to, to Bob Ross level. Let me close this and put it in a place where I won't get it all over my hands. So for colors, let's see what we got going on. I have gold. And I should probably base coat this black before I start painting, but I think I'm just going to start and see what it looks like. Bronze. So I think I'm going to start with this bronze to give our dark color. And then we can move on to gold and maybe even add a little bit of copper and silver. But I'm going to leave them here for now. And normally what I do is base coat it black, put in our first level of... Um, metal words <laughs> for our first level of metal and then you can take a sandpaper and then sand some of that metal off and you get these natural scratches in your metal exposing the black but because this surface is so tiny it's tough to really grab a hold and do a good job without also marring this so there i get to yapping again and i was about to forget the blue tape so let's blue tape it up first finding the edge that's the toughest part or is it this way? There we go. So let's mask off our nice wood. That's going to look pretty good. Going crooked. Going crooked. There, I fixed it. And I fixed it. And it's going crooked again. There. And do I have. Oh, I don't have my X Acto knife. So, yeah, I'm going to have to go grab it. Um, three second intermission. I'll be right back. See, all this talk about having everything I need. Nope. Got it, got it. Although I have probably easier than this. So I was pretty prepared after all are my craft knives. Probably easier to get in a lot of these little corners. There we go, that looks pretty nice. And we'll do the other side, blue tape. Big old head out of the way. Big one that has glue on the tip, which will do me no good. There we go. 
few more. How many more sides? We got this side and then another side. It's gone crooked. It's like drunk driving tape. Stay in your lane. One more. Oh, I think there's one more after, uh, two more after this. I kid. Totally mean. Look, we're done. No, we're not done. Because we have, oh, did I not cut out this side? Glue hides a lot of my woodworking sins. Doesn't it ever? Isn't it like the best thing? And I discovered I usually use wood putty, but then one of my friends told me about this. It's called plastic wood, um, not sponsored or anything. He just gave me this, this tiniest sample. And he said, try it. He's a woodworker. And my problem is always when you stain wood that you have glue on, uh, you know, obviously you want to sand all that down because it just doesn't stain well. And it's, it's obvious, you know, so I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. You see the glue spots? Yeah, so I sanded down all right here, and I thought I did a good job. I took the sander, I couldn't detect any glue, I ran my nail on it, all of that stuff. Look at all those glue spots. So after I sanded it, I was like, ah, oh, do I really wanna sand it down? Especially since this is a shop piece. It's been banged into, it's been, it's got already, you know, signs of wear and tear. So I figured, you know, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Uh, and, uh, if it gets too bad, I can always sand it down, but it didn't really bother me all that much. All right, I'm going to do the same thing here. And so that way we can carry our metal strip down here, or what I think is going to end up looking like a metal strip. That's the thought. We'll see. What ends up happening? And the other side. And that is all. Whoop, whoop, stay. <laughs> I like glue, but that stuff supposedly, I lost my train of thought, uh, but uh, we were talking about that thing, uh, that plastic glue or plastic wood filler. Uh, supposedly it's very stainable. Um, obviously no putty or um, sandable wood filler is, is, or stainable I should say, is gonna give you the exact same stain color, but some do a much better job than others. And so that, when I was using it along these seams right here, it's very like gritty. It's almost like you're rubbing wood dust on it. Uh, which, you know, a lot of fillers have that quality, but this one was especially wood dusty. And so uh, I'm like, wow, this one might actually be stainable. Unfortunately, in our case, we're not going to be staining it. So I'm not going to be able to test that theory, but it's sanded, you know, up real nice, just like wood filler does. But this one was extra, extra wood dusty. So I'm going to imagine that it probably stains really well. But I will report back, you know, if, if it doesn't, if it's like a whole buttery uh, and it's horrible. So what side am I on? That side. All right. Let me do this. And it looks like I already was working with bronze, so might as well keep the bronze. And instead, there's another way to create scratch streaks, which is to use a dry brush of black and you create streaks that way. So I think that's the way I'm going to go with this. And I think... I think this is a good size. We'll stick with that. So, 
Got my painter's tape on. And let's get this started. And then we'll let this first uh, coat dry while we move on to the placard where we'll be able to start drilling holes for our switch. Or I guess it's just one hole. And for that, I will use probably the hole saw, which uh, I'm not the greatest at. The hole saw, there's a couple tools that, you know, I don't know if you guys have any tools that kind of uh, kick your bum when it comes to using them. And I think it's because I just don't use it all that often. So when I do have to use it, it's dancing on me all over the place, unless it's the size that you can use the drill bit, then it's not so bad. But if it's not, then if it's the one where it can't fit the drill bit, then I am dancing. It is like La Macarena, all of that, all over my piece. Now let's get a nice coat here. And that's looking pretty good with a single coat. Now metallics, I was kind of doubtful of doing this. Metallics normally need more coats, uh, but this is covering pretty well. I think with a second coat, we'll be pretty good here. And I'm being mindful of my brush strokes of how I'll probably use the black to create our, our uh, you know, our scratches and then we'll use some gold or a lot of gold this is just kind of like our base here now normally if you were building this step by step and you had a, a prior plan of how you were going to do this uh, I would just spray paint these pieces first with this bronze or even hammered bronze a rust-oleum and various brands already make the hammered so you get that metal look right off the bat without having to do all this or even do any effects but i think the effects are going to give us an even more realistic look and then glue them on you know but when you're kind of deciding things on the fly sometimes it's about taking two steps back and uh, one step forward sometimes three steps forward where you've made the right decision from the get-go and you're like yes lucky let me move that where you guys can can see it so i get to chatting with you guys and i'm like where am i rachel's falling off the universe all right so that's already looking kind of blotchy which is uh the idea here i think that's what i want i think that's what i want And we will also paint up that control panel. So here's another decision time. So I can also paint this gold. So we have a gold placard here, or I can paint it black. Like we uh, painted the metal black and then put a couple gold kind of uh, uh, deformities, or what am I trying to say? Aging, some like gold and corrosive aging on the black panel. Uh, or we can paint it gold to match this border or this uh, metal strap effect here that we're going to be creating. So that's up to you guys, you know, so either black with uh, gold aging effects or make it to match the, the frame there. I'm calling it a frame for now because it kind of looks like a picture frame for now. I'm hoping that we can undo that and we're going to make it look like legit straps, metal straps. Black would be cool, is saying frozen mustache. I'm thinking the same, I'm thinking the same, but I wanna hear what, uh, what you all have in mind. All right, so we have a good first coat there and it's looking kind of blotchy, which is the desired effect. Normally it isn't, so I'm gonna go in and get this tiny little side right there. I should have done these first because now it's messing up my effect. There we go, so you guys can kind of see what we're dealing with here. Because this is the, uh, the end grain, so it's always tougher to paint. And like you really have to jam the paint up in there and it seems to like suck it up like, mmm, delicious, deep into the wood. And then you have to, you know, give it another go. And the end grain sometimes will paint darker than the rest of the wood. But because it's in like hiding back here, I don't think anybody will be able to tell. 
And then David also brings up a point because the switches are black. Uh, the bronze would bring out the switch. All right. That's a good point. That's a good one. Let's see if I can turn this around. And I always promise you guys, like, I'm going to try not to do a watch and paint dry stream. And then what do I do? Make you guys watch a paint, <laughs> paint dry type of stream. Oh, sometimes the best plans. But I got our little, our little control panel box done. And I think once we get it all wired up, we have that large silver conduit that I think will make a really great power, main power cord. And then I'm gonna go out and buy a same one like that, but smaller diameter. And that one will go from the bottom of our bubbler into our window. So I think that one will look a little bit more realistic. What am I missing? I'm missing over here. loading up the paintbrush which is you know normally we don't do that normally we're dry brushing we're doing all these effects where we're using very very little paint on the brush but nope I'm going at it and thicker thicker paint to avoid more coats isn't always the best way to do it uh, but I think I think I'm winning right famous last words but I think I'm winning Oh, and the black switch, the knife switch, uh, it's going to look way too polished plastic uh, when we get done all of our aging effects. It's going to look like shiny plastic. So one of the things I thought about doing was to make it very, very bronze silver itself. So I was just starting to think about David's point about making it bronze so the black switches stand out. And then I'd forgotten that I was kind of having plans to do that unless you guys have a better idea because if you look at this switch by the time we put it on see it's it's a modern day knife switch it's cool because it gives us like the basic look that we want but it is you know shiny plastic so I was going to take a um sandpaper to it just to dull it up and that might be enough that might look uh, really cool that way but I think we're going to have so many cool aging effects that we can age the edges and kind of bronze it up you know especially in the areas where we're not making contact so I definitely want to colorize that a little bit or colorize in a way to age it I guess is is what I'm trying to say and David is saying winning yep and he's saying he votes yes to the smaller ribbed wire cover. I think so. We'll use the main one, the, the big one I have for the main power source. And we'll save the rest. That way we have some contrast of cords coming in and out. Also, uh, some of the power cords coming into the knife switch, for instance, those are mounted to the outside. So obviously we don't want some lame looking just wires, you know, so they can look extra thick. Uh, but one of the things that I've done with pipe lamps and, you know, old timey looking vintage lamps, and I've seen it on that, is to wrap the wire in twine. So you have kind of a, it's not really a farmhouse look, but, you know, just like an older looking cable. Uh, you can even curl the cable as well, although our wire won't, won't curl very well. One of the things you can do is use a coat hanger or a thin copper wire and create a spiral, kind of like a, the old phones, and then wrap the wire on that with twine. And it creates kind of like a cool look, like a cool old look. Now, some people don't like it. They say that's a fire hazard. You're basically putting twine on the wire. Yes, you know, obviously, if you get a, a fire, you have something flammable right there. But if you ask me, if you are not home and you have an electrical fire, 
a short length of twine is not gonna all of a sudden Michael Bay level explode your house. You got a fire, you got a fire, and a small bit of twine is not gonna make it exponentially worse, right? But if you were running a long length, then yes, that say from one room to the other, then you introduce fire to the other room. So one of the things that I've seen people who build these lamps do is douse the twine in fire retardant uh, chemicals or not chemical it's basically a solution you can put in a cup or a bucket douse the twine there let it dry and then use it so now you have that extra level of fire protection as well but we're going to be having such a short level it'll just add that nice pop and we can curl the wires you know to make it look more old-timey and that bit of twine is, is not going to, like I said, Michael Bay level explosion the shop. So I think we're good. I think we're good. Let me just now, where's the other side? There it is. It's, it's on the actual other side. So we're almost done our one coat. And then I'm going to move on and do the same with our placard, which should be dry enough for us to handle. Just trying to get all the bottom edges first. I always forget to, to do that. Where are my eyes at? Oh, right here. Here are my eyes, but I don't I don't need them quite yet. I probably will need them. I'm just flipping flicking the paint first layer. So the way I did my doors to add an aged metal effect was indeed because I had I was working on much larger surfaces. I indeed spray painted it black, spray painted it with the hammered metal and the darker one. I believe it's like the gun metal. Let all that dry. Then I sanded making scratches across the gun metal briefly exposing the black just a little bit so now it looked like scratch metal. Then I took that and with browns and red oxides on top, created a lot more rust. So we're going to be using a similar style, you know, maybe slightly different colors for this to create a similar like rusty looking effect. So that way it doesn't look like a, a gold picture frame. I kind of don't want that. Okay, if you guys like totally hear snoring, that's that's not me <laughs> that's not me that's one of the dogs so I think that's Ripley that's how riveting she finds this this project and Dave is saying I've learned to trust your artistry if the parts are contrasted I vote for diva to choose oh oh no I've always liked choosing what you guys want because then if it comes out bad I could be like oh I wouldn't have done it that way. You know, you guys totally screwed this up. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I would be owning it so bad because I usually agree with you guys. So I would be owning that mistake. Oh, wait, there are no mistakes. According to Bob Ross, we're good. We can do what we want because it'll just magically turn into a happy little surprise. So there. I'm just uh, painting this tiny little, uh, this thing right here, just that little layer. I forgot about that. And I have no blue tape. So I am like, I think I'm owning it. Yeah, I'm owning it. There we go. And that view is not any better for you guys to see what's going on. But yeah, I think I owned it. Look at that. Kept the paint off the black? Go me. Now I just got this side to do, and then we move on. Yay! I need like a, a shoulder cam that just like sits here and <laughs> looks down upon what I'm doing. That's probably a good angle that I should try next, is like the behind me, although you guys would see all the camera mess here. But I don't think that matters. I think like having the better angle matters more than the stuff in the background. Ooh, I talked a big game. There we go. I fixed it. I fixed it. I was like, oh yeah, I'm owning this. Oh, oh, not so much. 
Not so much. There, I only have just a tiny bit to go. Continue owning it. Let you back up. Either that or put my eyes on. Oh, two more inches to go. Two more little inches. And at least this doesn't look like it's going to need another coat because it's like the, the end grain. And usually it does because it sucks it all up and then you have to put in some more. But this one's, this one's not as hungry. And I'm just using my finger to kind of get rid of some of the mistakes, but not too many mistakes. All right, so I'm going to put this aside and just make sure there's no obvious issues here. Yeah, I'll put this aside for now. And uh, clearly I have a ton of room to put this aside on. So we need that there. Let's get rid of this tape because I don't think we're going to be needing it. Our switch. Oh, I just touched it, didn't I? And David's saying, I like your new camera view. Everything is in focus and we see a lot more of the action. That's what I thought. I think uh, getting into some of the larger projects like the barbecue, and then I had an idea for another project because, or project, I have many ideas for many projects, but I believe not next week, but the week after we start our plasma ball build. And that's going to be a wrench army only. No one else is going to see this plasma ball build. So we're going to be on point making suggestions because we can build the plasma ball, but then we need a way to display it. Like, should I make a cool candelabra, like a tall candle with our plasma ball on top should it be a wizard wand with a plasma ball so i need help uh your guys's idea on how we should display this plasma ball once we build it and that's just gonna be us uh, nobody else and so what did i say i wanted to just uh, sand the edges here oh yes the other project i wanted to ask you guys so we have after i finish sanding so i don't have to talk over the sanding I'm just sanding off any glue that might have seeped out. All right, now I can talk. So we have our barbecue build that we were going to do, like a barbecue caddy that can include all the tools. And then I was going to find a way to add some tech. Maybe there's a way to help you determine that your steak is done, your chicken is done. Maybe we can, you know, add some Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Uh, we can also maybe make it mobile. So that way somebody holding the puck when it's their meal, you can put it on there and it kind of like, maybe we can make a remote control caddy that goes to the person with their food. The other project that I kind of need to like get around to it some point is building a snare drum storage unit you know this can be a tall cabinet or whatever but I thought it would be cool to take um, all this I have like a pile of snare drums um, so my husband's also a drummer I'm an electric violinist so we play many instruments and, and we enjoy it but like many of you guys we got stuck home during COVID and so we started to pull everything out of the basement and there was some stuff that were like wow why are we still keeping this you know it just comes time sometimes to kind of purge the home you know and it's it's tough to do because sometimes you've been keeping something and you're like I'll get around to it and I'll get around to it and then you have to be like realistic I'll just repurchase it later uh, sometimes you think well I already purchased it keep it but then it's like taking up room and not paying rent right so anyways, we have a whole bunch of, we took out all these snares and drum kits uh, to be able to access other things, you know? And so we accessed the other things and got them all cleared out. And now we have a pile of snare drums on the floor. So I thought about making a very cool lit display, uh, but not staining it like wood. I thought like if we could think of the best songs that have the best drums, whether it's a fill, a groove, or something like that. And in essence, uh, grab parts of that music and do like a decollage like with Mod Podge and it's like a, a cabinet that's got all just the best fills best songs that are drum related and maybe even incorporate some kind of metronome since I have leftover LEDs you know and so maybe there's a way to program different beats per minutes and things like that but that's that's another project that's like on the horizon 
that I've been thinking about doing just to get better better organized, right? I did those cabinets here and boy, these this was a big help. This got a ton of stuff off the floor. So that's kind of like the, the, the theme of life lately, right? So, oh, here it is. All right, so looking at this, I just wanted to look at this one more time because this is gonna be black, but I am gonna paint it up so it's more, you know, agey looking and not so shiny. Here, the only thing we're gonna see here is this, once this is buried, this black portion, we're just going to be seeing this silver. And so I thought the silver would pop against the black and we are going to be matching, you know, with some gold accents and then this won't be entirely black. So I think it's safe to say that we can probably go with the black. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say we can go with the black. So let's see. And for barbecue ideas, that's a public build, but heck, might as well give you guys a head start on what you think should be in this barbecue build. And also give me some ideas for good uh, snare drum storage. Maybe you guys are musicians yourself. I think Dave, aren't you a musician? I thought you, I thought you were. There we go. And I'm just gonna paint this on the table because <laughs> it's already like, uh, we've done so many acrylic washes on this table and sometimes I try and put something down, but it just like washes right through it. So it doesn't matter. So, ah, much easier to base. And again, usually like I would be spray painting this, but I think getting some brush strokes will be kind of nice and help out our metal effect here. And as long as I keep them all the same like this, but first let me do these pesky edges. I always forget. Oh, Dave says he's a drummer. Okay, I thought so. I thought so. Like I know you played something, I wasn't quite sure. And then I know Frozen Mustache was here for a bit. So if you play anything, let me know. So if you're a drummer, how do you store all your drum stuff? Do you have a cabinet? Do you have um, a room or a closet? Maybe it all goes in there. Oh, and they're digital. It's much easier to store. Yeah. Digital drums are nice too because you can do so many sound effects. So it's kind of like an all-in-one. All-in-one effect. <laughs> He's got the three drums going. But I'm thinking of, because I did that whole thing like you guys saw, that was all stained also in this jackal bean. So I had some leftover and I love the way it turned out. Um, really nice rich dark tone without obliterating the grain uh, which is the objective and so I thought since I already did a project like that I don't want to do another one where I'm like staining all over again so I thought doing like a cool collage of just sheet music along the sides of the cabinet and then the doors can be open so that way we can shine some light on the on the uh, the snares and then we can even have cubbies, like uh, where you open the door, there could be modular little panels that you open to access all the drumsticks. And the drumsticks can sit vertically behind a acrylic plexi and we can uplight them from the bottom. So, you know, I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking about this, but I figured, uh, you know, I toss it by you guys. And Davey's saying, I can play almost any time of the day. You know what? You're right. One of the things sometimes when, say, we want to record something, it's always thinking about, okay, you know, the neighbors, what time is it, calling it quits after a certain time. You know, you don't want to, you know, be mean or keep people up or anything. So, yeah, that is a good option. And you can get some killer recordings out of digital drums some really, really killer sounds and recordings because you can just program in what you want. And virtually anything is, is accessible nowadays. I mean, heck, um, there are producers that don't even use drums. It's all loops and sound effects and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's all computerized now. And it sounds great, it really does. But 
yeah, so far no complaints. We've never really had any complaints, but also we're, we're not abusive of the noise. And same thing with violin. I can also play acoustic and not have to worry about, you know, worrying about keeping anybody up. Which it may be time for another cover. I know I keep saying that, but then I get like busy with these projects and, and I have fun doing these things with you guys. Plus, I'm always like... Uh, start the stream and then I'm always enthusiastic about hearing like where is this gonna go like sometimes I'll have an idea and sometimes it stays pretty on script you know the project I toss out some uh, ideas to you and, and usually it goes but then there's sometimes where it takes a left turn but in the best way possible because we end up with something really really super cool in the end so I'm always like excited when these start and like, where's this project even gonna go? I don't know, but we'll figure it out. All right, so I'm gonna put one coat of black and I'm realizing it's probably a lot easier for me to paint this once it's on the panel and then I can blue tape it and then really go to town without it moving around on me. So I just got this first coat here and I'm just gonna shove it, shove it away so we can start working on something else. And so finally, the other thing that we can start doing is making sure I'm not putting it in my Mod Podge water from before. So Dave Beck is saying, I use the computer to create drum sounds for different kits. Yeah, yeah, you can have, and that's a thing, like instead of storing like 20 snares, you can have all those snare sounds plus more. And especially like the iconic snare sounds um, that you hear and I remember working in a recording studio just when digital was beginning to take off and at that time you had to cut you had to cut and splice the tape together so I remember uh, digital is, is so much better and so I was interning there uh, as I was being a sound engineer for a short time in my life you know so I've, I've had many jobs uh, one of them was that but unfortunately with uh, being a sound engineer. It was right at the time when all these electronics were coming out. The studio I was working at closed down and a lot of our area studios closed down, all the big ones. People can get a lot of the same sounds at home anymore for way, way cheaper. So it was bad for the recording studios, but so good for music in some ways because now people could create and not have to worry about the money. It made it more accessible to acts that would have never been able to record and whose music you would have never been able to, to discover. You know, so it's a good and the bad. It's a lot like a web design um, and animation and all that. Now all the tools are available, you know, to everybody. And so it's good and bad because you used to be able to charge a decent amount of money, you know, for clients like that. But now there's like build your own websites, build your own, you know. And so the business is always out there. Uh, same thing for recording studios. It's not like every recording studio has shut down, but it is definitely tougher. You know, it's tougher for everybody, uh, but also has its pros and cons because it's so great for artists uh, that didn't have that accessibility of being able to come to a studio. Sometimes it's not always monetary. Uh, sometimes it's distance. You know, you live in a very remote part of the country and to get out to a recording studio is expensive or, you know, you just can't do it. So now you can record and do everything at home, come up with amazing sounds. So yeah, it's all in the box, all in the box. All right, so our second coat is looking pretty good. And wouldn't it be nice if I shared it with you guys? Here I am painting and stuff all on my own. So yeah, I thought that would be a cool project to not only store these snares, uh, but also celebrate the love of music and drum fills. I thought that would be kind of cool. Now I'm a huge Beatles fan. So of course we got to have some Beatles going up on there. But I'm trying to think of others. Uh, Foo Fighters have some really great drums and drum fills. Guys, Rush. How could we not have some Rush up in that build as well? So I'm putting it out there to you guys if you guys 
um, want to do that build first or the barbecue. I'm good either way. I'm looking actually pretty forward to both of those builds and I already started thinking what we can do with the with the barbecue. I thought doing the uh, the remote control barbecue would be pretty funny. Have that thing chase somebody down with their burger. And if they want their burger more well done, and, and you know, they can always send the caddy back to you. And so I have some cool ideas for that, but mainly storage. We need a caddy where we can like really store stuff. My dad, uh, David Beck is saying, uh, my dad made most of the jingles on the radio back in the day. Dallas has several studios, which I have seen many watching him sing, yeah. Or had several studios, yeah, yeah. And even here, there's still a couple studios here in the Philadelphia area, but yeah, the big, big ones, yeah, they've uh, closed down because a lot of churches, a lot of choir groups can now, in essence, handle a lot of their sound needs themselves. There's a lot of like off the shelf stuff that you can buy that's much more user friendly now. Now, obviously, are you going to get the same? quality sound as somebody who's been doing it for 20 years maybe maybe not but then comes like a young kid that just puts something together and blows everybody away like all the veterans away so you can't uh, you can't knock it you know uh, for whatever it is I think like the most important thing anyone can do is stay diverse in in your skills so hence my my many jobs you know and somehow they've been kind of all coming together oh there we go coming together, you know, to be one thing, you know, streaming and video editing and building cool things that I once had to build on sets, whether it be recording or for TV, movie, and uh, theater. So, all right, I'm going to let that guy, oh, did I do this side? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I kind of wanted to do you first instead of the top, but I'll sneak you in. I think that's good. I think we're pretty good with two, two coats. And we can go ahead and glue and screw the panel. I made a rhyme, our black panel. And then we can paint it while it's anchored down instead of sliding all around like I was trying to paint it. And I'm out of bronze. Man, somebody is snoring super loud. I don't know if you guys can hear that. You know, oh, there you are. <laughs> I think it's Ripley. She has some really loud snoring lately. She's just developed that snore all of a sudden. And she's only six months old. my last side yeah so I'm pretty sure same thing happened in Texas then like you had a bunch of studios and then slowly they keep trying to make ends meet until you can't anymore and I remember the calendar started to really dry up in the studio before we had bands coming in every week, artists, soloists, jazz bands, you know, anything, basically. And then little by little, the gigs started to become less and less until you'd go like sometimes a full couple weeks, even a month without anything. All right, so let's see, get this in the water here. And so this is not bad. This is like a, a webcam, so it's not the quality of the others. Now, the others, the focus on them is killer. Um, when they're not connected by HDMI, when they're just themselves, they can lock onto your face and just not let go, like, like a dog, like that. But as soon as you hook them up via HDMI, they lose their ability to find your face. And so they're going to focus on the thing that's closest to them. So I always have to be mindful. Like if I'm showing something like this, if it's in front of me, this is what it's going to focus on, which sometimes it's good because that's what I wanted to focus on. Uh, all right. So let's get our panel here set in place and I'm going to grab the glue, which was down here.
It's a little wet, but I think it'll be okay. That way we ha also have a better idea of how this thing is going to look. Oh, am I going to have to remove the tape? I'm going to cheat and go like this so I can see what I'm doing. don't have to remove the tape and I'm just gonna stand up to give myself a better view without knocking anything down All right. just so it's not crooked which is kind of tough to tell with the with the tape but I, the tape is pretty straight so I can use that as a guide and I'm just gonna push down like that a little fingerprint but it's gonna get another coat anyways And I'm going to check the back. And that is pretty sweet and fell. Come back this way. All right. That's pretty good. So I'm just going to leave it there for a second. For this, check this out. Let me see if I could find it in my pile here. Of I separated out these little screws because I thought that they would look pretty good here. And let me give you guys a much better view. See these guys like right here? They're a little bit bronzy, so I thought that we can put them in like that just on the sides here. But I think I wanna finish painting this up before I do this. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to just glue it into place. And then we'll do that. And then next, we have that. And then we can also plan for this guy. And let me back you, go whoop, that's the wrong way. Back you guys up for that. And so this we can, get an idea of where we want it to be. And so I think something like this, I'll go ahead and draw out the holes using a Sharpie here. And Dave Beck saying, and they are slotted. Good call, yeah, yeah. All right, so you guys probably can see better than I can. I'm kind of using your view here uh, to see if whether the bottle is crooked, not crooked, you know, that, that looks pretty straight like that. And we have to remember that this thing is gonna be on there as well. And this is kind of as high as it goes. Oh, guys, I might have already been making a boo-boo. Let me see where our support bar is right i was gonna screw right in and oops no support bar all right so the support the support bar is oh i'm just going to very carefully rest it let me grab the tape measure and our support bar begins one and three quarter inches from the top oh that little panel here he got all he got all wooded Luckily, he's pretty dry, so we can just, just do that. <laughs> All right, so we have to make sure that this most top hole here is a minimum of one point, or one and three quarters. So this has got to be below that, which is about here. All right. Oh, no, he's crooked. straight so let's see here one and yes that is plenty so he's gonna be pretty good there good thing I checked guys pay attention <laughs> I was about to make a giant boo-boo so what I'm gonna do now is simply mark him he looks straight there and I think he is And I'm gonna try and do this without getting my big old head in your way. Yeah. I'm gonna put a couple holes. So 
So I'm gonna go ahead and drill this. But what I didn't realize is that I don't have any bolts that are long enough. So if you pay attention to what we did up here, we have our hex bolts that go through and with nuts, they attach to the lid and I've already chipped some paint. It actually ended up looking pretty good. So I might, I might keep it. So I try to find more hex bolts because I have this cool nifty kit right here. And Oh, the bottom hole, Dave's already on me. Oh, I think I pre-measured this uh, yesterday. I think I'm good, I think I'm good, but I'm a, I'm a double check just because now you, you made up a, a good point. So this is the longest one I have and it's way too thick, look at that. Uh, and so then I looked at my stash to see if I had anything extra, um, or this right here, you know, so I have all kinds of just like random machine screws and uh, regular screws and all kinds of wood screws, construction screws. So I tried to find like a nice little hex bolt that would fit and is long enough, but I don't have it. So I'm gonna run out and buy it, but I figure we can leave everything pre-drilled so that way it's ready to mount. And I am just going to do what they said and you know, check this out. So let's see here. I'm going to turn it so we can see how much I I'm winning or not so much winning. Let's see, where's the tape measures over here? Ooh. All right. So from the top, that looks like five, five and a quarter-ish. So five and a quarter. And let's see here, from here to the bottom one right there, that is less than five. So we are within the margin. And I remember when I picked out this board, I made sure that this uh, fit in it. So it was a one by six. So a one by four, which I have a bunch of spare as well, was just slightly too small. So the one by six fit perfectly. Let me do that. And uh, is not the best way to paint but sometimes when you get a little bit of dirt in your paint it looks even better it looks more oh natural and I still do have my coffee grinds right here they smell so good I remember once we were done with them making this I so didn't want to vacuum them because the entire shop smelled so good I was like I can just wake up in the morning and come work down here so I guess while this is kind of doing it's a quick dry and it's almost there, I'm gonna cut a hole in the bottom here so we can fit our tube. Is that a bit of paint? Yes, it is. Let me just rub it off. Cause it's like hardening so you can just pick it. There we go. So I'm gonna put this away because it didn't have the correct the correct pieces, I have my uh, hole saw situation there that we can also try just in a minute here. As soon as this, I think it's pretty much there. We can uh, go for it. And so I wanna fit this little piece right here. You guys can see that. And I wanna fit it here. And that's gonna correspond with the hole that I already drilled. And so let's see what kind of drill bit situation I got going on. and then we'll use the hot glue to secure it into place. Our favorite hot glue. And something like this is a good start. It's only slightly smaller. So let's start with that and we can always like bump up if we have to. And let me put this guy in here. Ooh. It's like go back in your home. All right. Uh, I need like a table with like wings that will like extend there, extend here, extend here, heck even extend over here just to have all this stuff kind of like at the ready. I may end up putting like shelves down here where I can just put everything that I need. So let's, let's move you here and figure out, like usually if I can rest my arm, I can just do that and I think I'll be okay. And I separated out that bit. Where'd it go? Under 
underneath. It's like, please don't use me. You're just going to mess it up. But good call, David, on the measuring it. I was like, yeah, I own this. Luckily, it worked out. Doesn't always work out. All right, let's see if I can just kind of go like this. And this is where, like, this view is in handy because this is probably not going to make that view. So I give this view like an A minus A, you know. We'll try a different view next time and we'll start, like, rating them. But I guess it'll depend on the project as well. So. Oh, don't wander. So we have a small hole. I don't know if it's going to be enough to fit this thing, though. No, it needs to be a hair bigger because this is the part of the plastic that's also the thickest, uh, which I did on purpose so that way we don't put that in the more flimsier, like the walls are more flimsy. But down here, it's pretty, it's pretty hefty. And that's going to be holding our fog juice. So we don't want a flimsy plastic. So I'm just going to go up a notch to a 3 16 and see how that works. David Beck is saying he gives the view an A+. Plus. All right. So this is a good view. Safety glasses what? Oops. Sometimes you get into it and then, oops, until a piece of plastic flies into your eyeball. All right, that is almost like pretty much fitting. I got just a little edge of it in. I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit more. Uh, this is way too big. Eh. Because it's tapered. So the top is a little bit more narrow than the bottom. So let's see here. This will fit the bottom, I think. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. We can always hot glue. You know, I was hoping to get a snug enough fit where we will hot glue, but you don't want it to be where the hot glue is the only thing that's holding it together. All right, here we go. All right. Theoretically, that should be perfect. So let's see what happens. Nice. It's got that little ring and it acts as a natural stopper. Like it's not going through. That's exactly what we wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue this. Ooh, I forgot to fire up the hot glue gun. So I'm going to go firing that up while we move on. And we will move on to put these two together so they don't You know what? Remember the hole saw I was telling you guys about? I didn't realize I had a half inch. This is probably enough to get our toggle switch. So let's let's get that done. I'm trying to put this in a place where I'm going to remember it. And the other thing I had to remember was up here, which were the little screws. So no, it was something else that I had put up here. But I'm pretty sure since it's not up there, we've already used it. And I can't even remember what that was. So. Let's move this aside here as the hot glue. I'm gonna put you right here. Fires up and gets hot, I guess. And I'm gonna move this here and let's lay out our goodies, our knife switch. And I'm gonna actually just turn this around so it's facing me. And in this case, maybe I will switch you guys this way. And put him right there. So. I figure I put the fog juice right here and this switch right here. Oh, it was the plaque. Yeah, so we've already taken care of the plaque. Okay, the, David was reminding me that I put the plaque over there and I was like, please guys, don't let me forget it. So this is kind of tough to measure out, but I think we're going to end up painting 
but I figure since I already have these, the drill set ready to go, I might as well drill these holes because then I can paint inside them and stuff. Although, you know, these got bezels and things. I have to like screw up really bad, but I'm not gonna put it past me, right? Let's uh, drill these out ahead of time because I can always use paint effects to hide my, my boo-boos. So if I have this like this, and I'm just gonna draw an outline. Actually, I'm gonna move this guy down a little bit. He looks pretty center. Sometimes I don't measure, I eyeball it, because sometimes like uh, house walls and things, if not everything is perfectly uh, straight, when you do measure and make the switch say, you know, perfectly straight, well, if not everything else is perfectly straight, then it won't look straight no matter how much you measure. So sometimes I, I will take the eyeball approach. So then I know that this is about halfway and I can take my half inch. Oh, David Beck. David Beck was like, do not forget the blue tape. What are you doing? Yes. This time we're gonna remember our blue tape and I'm going to put it, I think I'm gonna put the switch right around here. So that's about the halfway point right there. All right, I'm gonna go for it. Here we go. Oh, hold up. Don't move the drill. I have the perfect spot. There we go. Right? That looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to go for it. Yep, going for it. Dun, 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 dun. It's not horrible. Let me bring you guys in. Whoop, wrong way. I think in this instance, the blue tape didn't perform as expected, but I can work with this. This is actually not bad. I think the blue tape would have worked really well for the cutting out of the box, which thankfully that part is completely covered. But this, now, some of them, you know, you have to pay attention the on and the off and make sure you get the bezel in the right orientation and, you know, not accidentally put it on wrong, which I could so do. So. Now, I can't remember if this little, see, there's a nut there. And now I can't remember if this goes on the underside or on the top side. I think it goes on the top side like this, right? No. So nut, bezel, and then like locking nut, or should the locking nut go underneath? Oh, I can't remember. I'm gonna put it underneath for now until I hear from one of you guys and then it's an easy switch, it's an easy switch. So on, I'm gonna make sure is in the top position so it's like that and we'll just flip it off. Not like it's connected to anything, but let's see. Flip this over. Little bit more it's uh, if you can see let me give you guys the new and improved view right there so if you can see um, I didn't do what Dave said um, earlier it's like measure you know from the bottom look it's right on uh, riding the edge of our hole here but it, it's cleared so I'm just pushing it through under the plate then the nut on top all right 
So I have a nut here, and then when I flip this over, then we put the little the little locking nut thing, which where'd it go? ready to go I need to take these safety glasses off because they are so full of crud that sometimes the thing is right near me and I know it's one of those like you see it and it's in your face but you don't see it you know so you almost have to call somebody else to come look you know at the table for you and then they spot it in two seconds and you're like oh my gosh so I'm just going to crawl around and, uh, or there you guys are, to see if maybe it fell on this side. And it did not. All right. So they were all together, but it went missing. So what I'm going to do is put it on as is, and then when I find it, I'll uh, replace it. So I try not to talk so loud when I'm up there. So what I'm doing here is we have a nut on the bottom and here we would have that little locking nut thing which is missing and oh is it under here? No. Which is missing. So as soon as I find it then I'll just disassemble this. Then we have our bevel and I are like our little decorative piece and I made sure the on is indeed oh that the on is indeed. So this made it through despite it pretty much riding the edge here and I'll put that little locking uh, nut as soon as I see it and then on top of that would go this is my understanding and then on top of that would go this to lock it down. Been a while since I installed one of these. So I remember these top ones are always tough to get started. Let me just clean out a little bit more of the, the wood. I think I had put it on there and didn't realize because here it is. I'm just going to use this to clean it out a little bit. It's getting caught up on some of the, some of the little shards of wood. Here we go. Nice. There. That is looking much better. I'm going to hold it up as I try and do this. Put its little locking nut or locking ring and then our indicator bezel. needs to sit on a there's a, a groove like the off has a little tab and the switch has a groove so you just have to kind of like line that up so it kind of helps you put it on the right way you know it's made especially for people like me we get to talking and then things end up getting hooked on backwards hold on let me grab my eyes let me grab my real eyes And David Beck saw the missing washer is on the switch. Yes, I was calling it a locking, a locking nut, but yes, it's on. Eventually I found it. All right. Now I know there's at least a quarter inch space. Oh, I think I got it. These things are always tough to start, but then once you get them, I'm not going to put it on too tight. So, yep, that that fits nicely. And I'm going to go ahead and drill holes for these, see how it looks, and then I'm going to remove them so that way we can finish our paint job without worrying about getting paint on our guy. So that against the black actually looks really, really well. And uh, I'm going to use some rust effects kind of around here, and that'll hide that, that tiny little you know thing that happened there and so using that switch now I can kind of work backwards and realign this which ended up being pretty good look that's 
that's just about center, you know, however you, you flip it. It can be a little bit deceiving. So I'm going to extend this and just make a mark here. And what I may have to do for that switch is as we paint and build paint up in that hole, I might have to just kind of jam the drill bit back down there. And so now we got two nice holes. And let's see what size we're dealing with. Definitely not that size. Let's get these guys in order. Whoop. There we go. One's pretty good. That one's perfect. I'm going in without the without the tape. Pretty good and I'm not too worried about those because they're gonna be very much covered by our large plate so however those holes turned out this is the one where you had to be a little more careful because the bezel just isn't all that big so I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this so I only had it a finger tight screw just for us to see you know what's going on and it looks like our glue is ready to go so there we go we can get our bottle done and now let me put this back in order. Let's put our little washer in here, our bezel, which goes like this because the tab is there and then our locking nut or our finishing nut. So there, nothing can escape. Put that aside and now we're gonna go back to the bottle and hot glue this sucker together. So, I think we are done all the drilling, so I'm just gonna start moving some stuff off the table. Don't lose that. I've already lost too many things. So here's our little guy, and I'm gonna pop him in and hot glue him together. And I'm gonna be pretty liberal with this hot glue situation here. Really seal it up. So that way when I fill this for the first time, it's not like, oh no! Fog juice everywhere. Now I'm gonna take a close a close look, I'm gonna steal the bottle from you guys here a sec. Take a look at, it, at my handiwork. It's pretty good. All right, let that uh, set here for a while and we can start looking at what we got going on here. Using some tape, your guys' idea. I'm gonna go ahead and just protect our nice wood. Which ended up looking very, very good. I like it. Oh, we weren't done drilling. I still have those guys. But since I don't have the screws for them quite yet, I'm not going to worry about them. And I can pretty much screw these up pretty well, too, because we have that big flange. So it's very forgiving. This project is very, very forgiving. Now, 
because we didn't have a wrench army stream last weekend i'm going to toss in a friday ketchup stream because we still have a lot to do with this panel and i don't want to do it without you guys so i may uh we'll do a quick catch up like a uh get the project caught up stream and what i'm going to do is just give this another base coat of black and get everything like normally i would have this base coated for you all but i wanted to make this decision and see what you guys thought. Uh, some of you frozen mustache was like, yep, black. Uh, Dave thought bronze. I think either way we went, it was gonna look good. It was gonna look good. I'm talking to the wrong, to the wrong you guys. <laughs> so I think there was really no messing the color of this up. So that's good to know. Plus, if we had other ideas for this border, Now's the time, but I think it'll look killer. It looks a little too picture frame right now, but I think I can turn it around. I think I can turn it around. So, let's get another layer of black or coat. I'll bring you guys in on the action. You're all far away. There we go. I'm almost done with this black. This black is like at least 15 years old. It's not the thinnest paint, but it's really good for base coating because all the pigment is like all botched together. Versus when you buy new paint, you got like a nice mix of water and paint and it's all like floating in the water. Nope, the water's pretty much gone and you got like a whole bunch of pigment, pigment. So I've discovered that, I'm like, wow, this paint is really great. It does a good job. Although if you can't have brush strokes, I wouldn't use it. Uh, the brush strokes for metal plates actually helps us out. And it also helps disguise the wood grain. I've already sanded this before we started, but sometimes you can still see a little bit of the wood grain. The best thing to do if you absolutely are not gonna use a metal plate and you are going to be using wood is to putty the entire surface, thin, don't go nuts, uh, and then sand it down. And that'll fill in all those little micro um, striations, the microfibers inside the wood, and it gives you an absolutely flat surface. So that's my trick for when I want to use wood for metal effects. And now I'm just going to do one more time around the edges. I didn't do such a good job. So I think this stream we got everything mocked, drilled, not so drilled uh, on, on that side where we have to put our bottle but that'll give me time to run out to the store and not only get the thinner corrugated uh, you know wire cable management tube that we kind of decided on using the smaller one so i'll pick that up and i'll pick up the appropriate size hex bolts for our water tube our water uh, not water tube our fog juice and so we can wrap this up so it's ready for its big reveal on Monday. And then we start our, our other project, our plasma bulb. So I'll give you guys some time to think about it. You can always post up on, what is this? Post up on Discord any ideas for how you would like the plasma bulb to display. We're going to be using the largest incandescent bulb that I can find and converting that into a plasma bulb because uh, it's much easier to do it that way. It's already sealed and that's the way I've seen most people do it. Otherwise, you have to build an airtight chamber either out of acrylic or better yet glass. So I am not a glass blower and I've seen on YouTube a couple glass blowers creating these chambers so you can make a plasma globe out of it. So I'm like, yes, I don't have a, a, a fire situation here enough to do 
glass blowing. So I think we're going to stick with the light bulb and get our nice plasma rays coming out of it by pumping high voltage into it and using a 555 timer. And so for our high voltage source, I thought it'd be neat to use an ignition coil. We can build our own. And I think as an option B, I'd like to kind of build our own windings. Although a lot of people say that it's difficult to get uh, reliable results that way but I say we, we give it a try right let's just give it a try and we'll use a backup as our ignition switch or ignition coil and that'll be our backup so we'll have both prepped and so now after the plasma ball or our light bulb lights up and we get those cool striations and plasma beams well you know is it just gonna sit there all wired up? Are we gonna make it like a little table lamp, uh, a nice tall floor lamp, a, a wizard wand? I mean, it, it all works for me. And as that dries, I'm gonna do another coat on here and then I'll let the entire thing dry and then we will wrap this thing up later this week. And where's my bronze? Here it is. still have some bronze it'll be cool because you know what I'm gonna get the twine and I have some copper here yes I do it's might be enough but it's you know we can make like a nice little twirl see I already kind of started messing and, and playing with it but we can kind of make the telephone cord situation run our wire along it and then twine it up together and again i'm using so very little twine that i'm really not going to worry about exacerbating any type of uh, fire situation there we go that's the worst when um i was rereading dave's comment about the uh, washer already being on the switch that's like you know where's my glasses where's my glasses um they're on your head you know so I had a glasses on my head moment there it happens <laughs> and no matter where I move this you guys are seeing nothing build up off all right so we did okay got all our base coating on we got our switches in place and then I'm trying to think over the weekend how I'm going to wire this. I think I'm going to put these two side by side in the relative orientation that I would have them on the wall. So I'll probably end up clearing this entire table and organizing that, them that way and getting everything just kind of hooked up. Oh, and one thing else that I think I'm going to get is quick connect. Uh, between the wires that go from the control panel and the wires that go to the window in case so I can hang up one at a time and then quick connect them together and then hide the wires inside our wire cable management uh, that we're going to paint up later so I think that's the way I'm going to go so at the store I got to pick up hex bolts for the bubbler uh, the thinner cable management and I'll pick up some quick connects to make our lives a ton easier hooking this stuff up and then I will be using um, buck converters it's kind of like the quickest way that I know how to drop voltage to certain I'm getting yelled at right now somebody is very angry she's like I am over this stream and you paying attention to other people and not me so she is uh sitting right there none too happy with me and now she's knocking stuff over and now she's barking at the very thing that she knocked over 
get used to this new camera. I'm like, there you guys are. I'm used to only like having to talk to to one audience, you know, not not two different. I guess it's the same audience, but two different uh, ways of doing it. All right, I'm just getting the final coat on. And we'll go. She's like, I'm bored. Take me for a walk. I'm over. Uh, yeah, so David is asking, is that Ripley? It is. She is like over it. And she's like, I've been patiently waiting and letting you do your, your dumb little uh, lightning thing. You know, because she doesn't understand how awesome it is. So she's one of the first dogs that we've had that is not afraid of thunder and lightning. So it'll start like lightning and thunder. And she's like, I don't care. Really, I don't. So you would think she would be excited for this project. Whereas Eeyore's, any type of thunder, he's like running for the hills. So you would think. He's not very enthusiastic, but neither is she because it's not about her. Anything that's not about her... It's not really worth her time. She's like, all the attention goes to me. So I think this will look good. And I don't really see any wood, wood like grain. I called it striations. I meant grain. All right, so I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna let this dry before I kind of hit up another coat along the edges. So think that's looking good I don't know guys it's still looking a little picture framey to me but I have confidence I, I know I, I in my head I know where I'm going with this so it's more about like can I take what's in my head and transfer it you know through my hands onto here so that's always the hard part uh and but David Beck is like that's my dog <laughs> yep oh she indeed is so she's like oh I know she knows you're gonna take uh she knows you're gonna take her side so that's why she always comes to bark in and she's like you can be mad all you want because I know everyone watching is they're they're with me so uh, and I'm, I'm like yeah I know <laughs> you're right so let's see what we got going on here voila not much to look at right now but I see it I see the final product I can see through this and see the final product. So yeah, a little picture framey, you know, something like you would buy at Michael's uh, for your family photo, but I'm, I'm gonna work it, I'm gonna work it, and we're gonna work it on, on Friday. So there's our black panel, which I already like the contrast with the switch, and our nice wood, and the bronze is kind of our starter color. This is gonna get way more gold as we go along. So that's kind of the, the base coat. Same thing with that black panel. We're gonna put some worn gold uh, scratches in it and I think it'll end up looking really good. So I will meet you guys back here uh, because we're stream short and we'll, we'll wrap this uh, control panel up. So in the meantime, have a great rest of the night and rest of the day and stuff, rest of the week until I catch back up with you guys. And thanks for joining me. Bye guys.